Signal Sciences secures the most important web applications, APIs, and microservices of the world's leading companies, protecting over 7,500 applications and 150 billion production requests per week. Signal Sciences Next Gen WAF and RASP help companies increase security and maintain site reliability without sacrificing velocity, all at the lowest total cost of ownership. Signal Sciences patented technology protects any application against any attack with integrations into any DevOps tool chain. Signal Sciences, demand more from your WAF. Learn more at signalsciences.com forward slash PSW. Introducing the new DigiCert. As the leading provider of high assurance SSL, TLS, and PKI certificates, DigiCert is all about improving security across the web and IoT. DigiCert is committed to helping customers and partners successfully deploy identity, authentication, and encryption solutions. They'll even help you figure out which certificate you need to secure your web domains, apps, devices, and more. Check out the Cert Wizard tool under the SSL tab on digicert.com. Welcome back, everyone, to Paul's Security Weekly. A couple of announcements. As I said, we're going to be at Black Hat and DEF CON in the pool area. As you look out, you look for our flag. We'll also be in the DEF CON vendor area. We'll also have Cyber Hero Adventure comic books that you can get in the pool area from Gary Berman. They'll also be available at the Logarithm booth. Uh, Matt Alderman and I will be walking the Black Hat floor. We're also doing briefings. We may still have some availability for briefings and or paid interviews. Uh, so if you're interested, make sure you contact us as those are pretty much sold out and almost sold out at this point. And then, uh, Doug's doing trivia. <clears throat> That's completely free. Anyone's welcome to come do trivia. And there's going to be <coughs> Star oh, yeah, and I'll be there too. Star <laughs> Wars. Jeff will be there as well. Jeff will probably be one of the first people through the new trivia. I would say we'll use you as a guinea pig, Jeff. So we got Star Wars, Ooh. Star Trek, general technology, security, and then encryption. You should do the encryption. Star Trek, one. any of the any of the shows, or are we going back to the original series? <clears throat> Deep Space only, Nine only. Only, only next <laughs> you gen. Stole the line right out of my brain, dude. <laughs> it's it's be only next Deep gen. Space Nine. <laughs> oh really? Yeah, there's no other way to roll. Which I think is was underestimated. I don't know. I, I want to go back and watch Deep Space Nine. Enterprise. We, I got to get a Picard. I mean, <clears> yeah, it's I classic. Up on that stuff. It's, it's classic. I, I grew up on the original on a black and white 19 inch screen. Ooh, 19 I didn't inches. even know they had different colored shirts until Ooh. years later in syndication. That's how old I wow. am. I didn't know her was black. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. Ooh. And you had a 19 inch screen? <coughs> Must have been rich. <laughs> well, you know, nobody maybe was it was 15 deep. inch. No, it was probably 19 inch. It was a Philco. You remember no, the brand. You know, well, no, you're old and nerdy, Jeff. You know, no uh, one has two teams. Sorry, Jeff. So, uh, Josh, you had a quick announcement. <laughs> so I wanted to uh, share with everybody where they can actually get access to that the content that we're going to be re releasing. Um, so if you go to msfattack.com, we set up a, um, a site for basically redirecting to the, the portion of our site, mm. which actually is going to have all the content. So if you want to you know, go there. Is that like an AC access file redirect, or is it a WordPress something along redirection those lines. plugin? Something is along it, those lines. 302. Re it's, re 301, it's amazing. 302? Is it, it's amazing what we can do with Is it DNS. a rewrite rule, or is it a redirect match? Josh? I don't know. I <laughs> didn't even set it up, but um, <laughs> that's our great IT guys. Um, he has, they do he has wonderful stuff. for that now. <clears throat> that's right. Well, we have, he's fancy now. Well, We've got people for that. Oh, boy. Come on, guys. <laughs> You're not editing your own Nginx config files now? Josh? Well, by hand. <laughs> yeah. use, we use Vim. And that's the only way you do it. Ooh. You know? Vim? No, I'm just what, kidding. What no. else, how else would you do it, Josh? Max? Well, <laughs> no. Yeah. Oh, do, you, do, you do a regular expression. No. And your regular expression. The, I'm getting off the tangent. Your reg Anyways, regex. The regex. In Pearl. In, in regex Pearl. the regex. <laughs> But anyways, uh, so if you go to MSF... What was the website again? <laughs> and you guys were calling me a geek. MSFattack.com. <laughs> MSFattack.com. <laughs> and that's not... That just takes you somewhere where you can... Punch in and... Your, it asks that'll, you for that'll your have all email the address, social security number, phone number, date of birth. No. Just email. Just address. your email address. If, if you're interested Holy in the content... GDPR compliant. If you're interested in the content Where's that we're going to release... Uh, that'll have the webcast, the the the, the <coughs> gotcha. code for the MSF um, attack stuff. That's and, that's where the stuff is going to be. And soliciting emails to say, "Hey, it's here." That's yes. it. Beautiful. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. Um. Oh, Larry, this is your segment. <laughs> sure. <laughs> if you say so. If you say so. All right. So yeah, a yeah, uh, technical segment uh, and. Specifically, you know, well, you still had that picture. An introduction. Yeah, I still have that picture. I use it all the damn time because. I think I paid $5 for it. I got to get every penny out of it I can, right? <clears throat> um, 
So, uh, an introduction to uh, Osmo FL2K, or short, FL2K. And so, for those that don't know what FL2K is? We're going to talk about that. Okay, good. They're, they're going to be confused. Yes, but first, some background. Ah. Oh. But uh, so, uh, on the background side, we've been talking a lot uh, on the show, specifically me talking a lot on the show, about software-defined radio. Um, it's really exploded in the last couple of years, both uh, platforms and um, projects and use for penetration testing and just all sorts of, it's all over the place now. Um, me personally, I highly recommend looking into software-defined radio just for funsies and don't spend a lot of money getting in, involved in it. Um, there's just so much you can listen to. There's so much out there. There's so many projects that you can work with to just figure out what's happening in the environment around you. Like there were things that I, I use my software-defined radio weekly, if not more often. Uh, and there's stuff that was there present in the RF environment that I had no idea. Uh, you have you know everything your neighbors are talking about on the phone. Where's the best place to go for people to get started? <coughs> get there. <laughs> and so that's part of, part of the background. Um, Larry, what, what device are you using for software to get there? <laughs> so <laughs> software defined platform selection, right? All right. So not all of them are created equal. Um, some of my favorites are the Hacker F, the Blader F, uh, the Edis B. What, what's the best mini. one that you recommend? So the best one that I recommend, especially if you're getting started, is the RTL SDR. Why? Fully featured RTL SDR from RTLSDR.com is thirty-five dollars. Hmm. Software-defined radio with antenna. It's receive only. Especially, you know, listen what's out there. Hmm. Think about what we do during a pen test or a wireless assessment. What's the first thing we do? Recon. We sit and listen. Sit and listen. See what's there. Like <coughs> some we of the covered that story years ago, where they were listening in on their uh, headsets. Because there were 900 megahertz, I believe. Yep. And collected enough information about the company. I haven't told the story in a long time, but yeah. it's very relevant to our conversation yeah. today. Collected enough information about the company to pose as an employee. Worked there for like yeah. two weeks. Like went to the office birthday parties and like the whole the whole thing. And yep. no one had any idea. Yep. <laughs> so, All because they could listen. Exactly. Sit and listen. And one of the you know one of the things that I I was playing with at home was I, I wanted to integrate with my weather sensors or my weather station. And I was using my RTL SDR in a package called RTL 433. Uh, tunes into the 433 megahertz, listens for signals, automatically demodulates and decodes stuff that it knows about. And sure enough, it finds um, a window and door open and close sensors hmm. for the neighbor's alarm system that's ADT branded. Oh, like, interesting. I didn't know he had ADT for an alarm system. And sure enough, I go look and he's that's got the little ADT win stickers on his windows and... <laughs> I, 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 I just I, go like walk into his yard. No, and, like, I can see, I can see his house. Like, I can see window. his neighbor looking out. Like Larry's looking in the window. Like, yep, ADT. No, it, it's all good. <laughs> <Yep>. You're good. <laughs> but now I know when his windows are open. That's <laughs> more importantly. I started thinking. Now about you that. know when to start the lawnmower up. <laughs> if you don't like your neighbor. If it, well, he does that all to me every time I get on a conference call with a customer. He's most of, he most damn lawn. He knows. He's monitoring your internet. <laughs> He's got to be. Time. He's got to be. He's listening to my headset. He's listening to my headset. So you can spend tons of money on a software defined radio if you're looking to get. How much can it, you spend? Like, what's the what's the limit? So uh, we start at thirty five. How how much can we spend? So looking at some of the Edis projects or products, uh, I looked at one Edis product because I want to make sure I had the price for the the uh, the B two hundred mini right. Um, there was one that was thirteen thousand dollars from Edis. Wow. One software defined radio, and they sell these in racks. <coughs> yep. <laughs> so um, thirteen thousand. Thirteen thousand for a software defined radio. One software defined radio. You get what you pay for with an Edis product, though. Uh, you know, more bandwidth, yeah. more more capability, more tuning range, amazing transmit and receive. Transmit and receive, absolutely. Is it that much more? Yes. Yes. Is it worth the money? Uh, for my purposes, no. Not, yeah, it depends on what you're doing with it. Not yeah. currently. Yes. Yeah. So if you think about all of the devices that I, that I, I recommended, uh, that I recommend, and in the the Sans course, I don't own the Edis B200 Mini. I own all the others, uh, but I do have the the older Edis USRP2. Uh, so mm -hmm. uh, USB based, if I remember correctly. It's been so long since I've used it because I have other, because other alternatives. I have other alternatives yeah. now, especially and especially those that are <coughs> smaller in their form factor. Um, so I really like the RTL SDR. I have one here. I think I probably own 15 of them just because you set it and you forget it and you put it on a project and you walk away. Hmm. So 
looking at some of those, that's fun, but the RTL-SDR is receive only. So wouldn't it be nice if we could transmit? Sure. Um, there's a couple ways in which we can do so. One of the first ways I did so with interaction with the RTL-SDR was to use a Raspberry Pi. Mm -hmm. You toggle a GPIO pin, uh, and it creates RF energy. You can do AM, FM, you can do FM, and a whole bunch of other digital Oh, I remember, so yeah, forth. you yeah. did a, a segment on that with FM Radio. Yes. So FM Radio? So FM, FM Radio, yeah. and then uh, one of the tools that uh, my intern, Faith, and I developed, uh, a tool called Vapor Trail, to do data exfiltration over FM Radio. <laughs> Toggling a GPIO pin. Um, there's a couple of projects out there, RPI-TX and RPI-FM, that you can use for transmitting and all that type of stuff. Or you could use Osmo FL2K, or colloquially FL2K. What the hell is FL2K, as Jeff asked earlier? Well, FL2K is a set of custom drivers for the FL2000 chipset. Like the Pi, uses the FL2000 chip to toggle a GPIO pin to create RF energy. And where are these things found? In these lovely devices. <laughs> These are <laughs> USB 3 to VGA adapters. Hmm. Wow. And they typically run with the appropriate chipset under 15 bucks on Amazon. In fact, the link in the, the presentation is the, this one right here. It actually came from my Amazon order history. You can use this as a transmitter just like this. Hmm. You can make it a little bit better by taking a little piece of wire and sticking it in one of the pins. Oh, and it doesn't, <laughs> matter, what, doesn't matter what pin. Well, it does matter. Make, oh, make a difference. It does matter. There, there's okay. documentation there. And I, I can't read the number on it because I'm old now. Um, but uh, the Osmo FL2K uh, website does have the pin stock. Oh, because it looked like you just stuck it in any... Well, yeah. See, I marked it earlier. A piece of, uh, <laughs> specific one. I, I hit it, it with a black okay. Sharpie so I know it... <coughs> I was going to say because I would pen. think you'd have to the go into pen. a specific yes, pin. Yes. Yep. And I can't find it, but somewhere as I was learning about all of this, uh, someone built a board mm -hmm. that had an uh, VGA male connector to RPSMA connector. Mm, to make an <laughs> antenna. Well, so you can put, just put your own antennas on yeah. it. As opposed to you know plugging a wire into it. Is there a Yagi in the house behind you? Probably. Uh, Probably. And no, no RPSMA. Something. We'd have to cut some wires. And yeah, look, we're just going to use the little little thing that I you know, ripped off the, the, <laughs> the breadboard jumpers before I came mm. to the show. So... Uh, under 15 bucks, and yes, it uses a VGA adapter to do transmit for under 15 bucks. That kind of blows my mind. So that that's where this all stemmed from. It was like, wow, blows my mind. What Custom kind of, what set kind of drivers. range? Um, not great, because this, there's no antenna. The antenna is probably uh, <laughs> half a centimeter long, you know, five millimeters. So right. not a lot of uh, antenna behind it. Which is thanks for clearing half a centimeter is well, five millimeters. I, I, American <laughs> American audience, Jeff, come on now. <laughs> so you went metric to metric. I know, but still, still, some of our American audience knows five millimeters and doesn't know a centimeter. Okay. God damn it! I'm done. Screw you guys and go home. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't expect anything less from you guys. <laughs> All right. So, it's so, like a hostile audience. I there know. It's great. <sighs> so think about the fact that we can use an, uh, a, a VGA uh, adapter to uh, do some transmit. So I'm going to get this plugged in here. I'm going to get all annoying messages. In oh, the you have to plug it in to use it. It does. Uh, I guess. Yes, you do have it's to It's not wireless. It. <laughs> so it's wireless. It's just like your dildo, Paul. You have to plug it in to use it. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> no comment, huh, Paul? Well, yeah, see? I'm, I'm not even in the studio and I'm having a good time. <coughs> All right. So I took a, batteries. I took a uh, preloaded uh, uh, Ubuntu 1804 system that I literally spooled up two days ago um, and installed the FL2K drivers from GitHub, did the build, and did the prep so that it's using those drivers as opposed to uh, the ones that make it into a VGA adapter. You want to use these custom drivers. And you have a live demo? Hopefully. Mm. Hopefully. We see how those have gone so far tonight. So I, <laughs> I hope the demo gods have. Yes. All right. So we did. Appreciated the their sacrifice with Joff. <laughs> jo my Josh, VPN. Rather. My house VPN. All that. Yeah. So we uh, install FL2K and let's let's see what happens after after we've got that. Let's see if this Are demo. Are we seeing a works. demo? We're gonna try. I honestly, I it is untested, so I don't know if it works. So what I'm going to do... Always the best way to prepare for a demo, Larry. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> He's going to roll the dice and see if it works. Hell yeah. 
Uh, I mean, actually, so it's while, a pretty valid. So I saw John and I do presentations. Yeah. Is half a centimeter to five millimeters. <laughs> is that on a par with I traveled overseas to Canada? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. That was the last time I was here on the show. <laughs> was it? Really? It was. <laughs> There you go. Oh, that was when Joshua was here. There you oh go. God. Get you see, back, oh, wow. Jeff. See, Jeff, okay. see, Jeff I'm, in great com- I'm in great company, right? Remember that one, Jeff. <laughs> and somehow so, you also, breed, somehow, if it's possible for us to make more idiotic comments, you breed them out of us. <laughs> Every, and, you know, and you know what? We can also right-click and do view source and get the Pearl code, the PHP code behind it. I swear I never <laughs> said that. I mean, if I did, it's in an MP3 file somewhere. But, uh-huh, you know. uh-huh. It's on the internet, man. It's on the internet. <laughs> I, I, I left click, but I'm yeah. not. It's a, it's okay, and we we also have learned about Uberly hacking tool called Screen. Oh come on now, <laughs> or Tmux. <laughs> hey man, I kid right, because I love. Installed it. <laughs> demo yes. Coming yeah. All right. So let's see here. Are you going to use the tracer T command? We are. We're, we're, we are actually going to use the tracer T command, and it figures. Rm minus rf <laughs> forward slash star. That's how you start this. So. We're going to use the FL2K, uh, yeah, if it manages to copy and paste. Uh, apparently, this is the hardest part of the whole demo. Copy, copy and paste. Pasta. Our FL2K uh, command to transmit on FM, and we're going to give it a sample rate and um, a frequency uh, uh, frequency offset. Uh, the input uh, rate of the file and a, and a wave file. It's a 16-bit PCM encoded... Mm-hmm. Uh, wave file, and we'll hit enter. Now, I'm using a U- this is a USB three device. I'm mm-hmm. using it on a USB two port passed through to a virtual machine. Hmm. Timing is not particularly great. Right. So okay. we'll see what happens. And now you have a receiver that's listening. Uh, we will. Oh. USB. Let's check. All right, let's see. Everyone, turn your Perfect. dials. Looks good so far. Yep, looks good so far, for the most part. Let's fire up that receiver. I always prefer my buffers in user space. How about you, Kevin? <laughs> All right. So there's nothing. Oh, figures, there's nothing there, right? Me a towel or right? There's nothing. Oh, that's not your wave file? Okay. Can we oh. punch uh, like some dev random over that thing? <laughs> and just see the, the sounds of randomness going over this radio? Is it? Does it loop it? Is it looping it? Larry, can you enhance this? Enhance. Enhance. <laughs> enhance. Just like in the movies, there's like an Super enhance troopers. button. Yeah. Larry, Larry, can you enhance. make it make sense? <coughs> enhance. Hmm. Does this thing do 4D visualization? Yes, it does it 4D. Like so it figures we've got another station somewhere right around there. It's in the studio. <laughs> the call is coming from inside the house. <laughs> <laughs> It, a lot of it is a lot of static. I saw something like this one time in Canada. Yeah, overseas. when you were overseas. Security, <laughs> security, <laughs> security <laughs> weekly radio. <laughs> now, see, Vivian, I'd use, I'd use screen so I could more easily toggle between the two. You could. Yeah, absolutely, you could. <laughs> security weekly radio. It so. looks like <sighs> it's modulating somewhere around. It's supposed to be at 95. A About a centimeter? <laughs> So it's supposed to be at 95 megahertz. Okay. And maybe 165. So let's see. Now is the, that a range or is that a... So the transmitter itself is of such poor quality by toggling GPIO mm-hmm. that there's lots of bleed over. Gotcha. And it figures nothing. So much fail. You created so much static on the show, Larry. I know, isn't it? <coughs> Did you test your wave file beforehand? No. What what is what is the wave file? What are we supposed to be hearing? I eat apples. <laughs> nope, it's better than that. Let's see here. Let's uh let's stop this noise. Let's see if uh this will work. Flat. Plat. Is that a, it's a new it's a new command. App right, get right. install plat. <laughs> <coughs> wow, this is this is an amazing wave file right here, let me tell you. Whoa. Quite a sample. Yeah. 
It's actually Rick Gasly's never going to give you up. Uh. <laughs> so, yeah. It's like, it may be the wrong format wave file. I didn't. We test have that it. in cassette format right there. You know. Sweet. Maybe running? that will help. Maybe I can rub that on the antenna. <laughs> I have a cassette, USB cassette, yeah, cassette player if you want to. We can just play oh, it during the break. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's how it's supposed to work, <laughs> right? The <laughs> command that I had seen with some of the other uh, samples for FL2K was this really long command about pulling by um, taking whatever you were playing over your pulse audio uh, and then... Uh, sampling it with PV and then converting it with AV convert and then piping it to the command to read from standard in. The command is like three lines long, and I just want to play a wave file. Right. It's supposed to be simple to play a wave file. So demo gods are are apparently failing, but that's the intent. We'll just chalk it up to well, interference. Well, assuming it's work. Uh, uh, yeah. Assuming it works. Right. So uh, uh, assu limited, assuming limited range. US, how USB do you timing. Use so it to cause mayhem. Right. So what will we do to cause mayhem? So great. We can transmit on FM. We can have our own little pirate radio station. There's a potential that we could dev uh, random. Dev random. Radio. Create. Get yeah, dev random radio. Sweet. It's the always, sound of dead always random all the gym. time. <laughs> we could. We could just always uh, random all the time. We could just Josh play is dial the new tone. DJ for. <laughs> <laughs> Radio DJ Dev Random. Random. DJ Random. I like Sue Sue Studio. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. Uh, you just trumped our nerdiest. <laughs> but we can, we can actually, <laughs> we can actually tie joke. these two things together. You can do some pretty <clears> awesome <throat> automated exfiltration if you took this capability, threw it into like an automated exfiltration mm -hmm. capability, which is a TTP in MITRE. And then you combine that with the software-defined radio. Now you're exfiltrating content over FM. What? Sorry, what vapor, it, vapor trail, which is the, exactly. the serious what, question. Does, yeah. what, what does it work if it? there's a monitor plugged into it? How do you mean a monitor? Like if that VGA dongle actually had a monitor plugged into uh, it, would it still work as a, a transmitter? Currently in that Linux distribution, no, because I'm using the a different driver. Mm -hmm. I'm using the driver to toggle the GPIO pin. I, the VGA might work and display really interesting things. Mm. What? I have no idea. Right. Um, chances are probably nothing, um, just based that we're abusing. <coughs> it would be a, a black screen yeah, most, most likely. likely. So yeah. maybe you can be broadcasting a soundtrack to when you're exfiltrating data, you know, using the blinky, the LED lights on the, on the front of the server. There you go. You could do that too. So it would look good in a movie. <laughs> <laughs> so Jeff, what can, you know, what, a CD what is drive the problem? makes a certain sound when it ejects and when it goes back in. So that, that can one be your binary, one, zero, one right? zero, zero right? or one, oh, right? Right. Mr. Well, Robot, are you a zero or are you a one? one? So Jeff, you asked the question. What does this really mean? If assuming it works, uh, there's apparently yep. some fine tuning that needs to to happen. And and sure, if you have enough time with the system and it has one of these, you could do that. So we can send FM modulated signals. Great. We could do potentially yep. a vapor trail uh, uh, over that. We could, you know, have our own radio station. We could do audio over that for covert voice channels. You name it. However, with the FL2K file command as opposed to the FL2K FM command, um, we can do much <coughs> more because it takes raw data. It's kind of like um, uh, using uh, not RF cat uh, the HackRF transfer. <laughs> You're sending raw data mm. to the radio, and whatever that raw data, data is, the, the HackRF transmits. Same thing for this. There's a project out there called the FL2K Examples um, from Steve M. And he's created a bunch of projects that use the FL2K Osmocom drivers in, in conjunction with other utilities to generate files to transmit with FL2K file. Those projects include the ability to spoof GPS, UMTS, LTE, and GSM. So all your cellular technologies mm. and GPS. So you could have your Pokemon move elsewhere so you can mm -hmm. hack all the things and not actually have to leave your desk. Right? Uh, it will also create uh, digital uh, video broadcast terrestrial signals, DVB-T signals, and uh, DAB, uh, digital audio broadcast signals as well. So now you have a couple of other ways of doing data exfiltration via TV, digital audio, spoof GPS, make bad things happen, spoof cellular stuff. Of course, you can send cellular, but where's your receive? Mm -hmm. Well, your receive is that RTL SDR, potentially. So, I mean, your your image there on your slide is showing a mobile device. Uh, are you limited in the ranges that you can broadcast, or can you pick up, you know, can you get into 
uh, and I'm talking way outside of myself here, but you know, Bluetooth, NFC can use some pre-existing, you know, receiver capability on the mobile device to to receive a, to the the signal. Right. So the the current image is uh, uh, I want to say it's spoofing uh, GSM. So okay. uh, it is uh, tra uh, transmitting that there's a GSM tower available, and the mobile device is showing that there's a GSM tower that's named something unusual. <clears throat> okay. Uh, <coughs> Excuse me, uh, an unusual network operator. And, um, yes, test PLM and a bunch of other stuff. That's not Vodafone where, where the individual lives. Um, this was one of the uh, the Osmo 2K developers testing it against their phone. Uh, hmm. So, okay. w and, and Jeff, if you note the image, um, the uh, transmitter is very close to the receiver in this case. Yeah. Um, yes, yep. that's that's a really practical distance for something like this. Again, is it half a centimeter away? The half a centimeter or so, because you can see it right there. <laughs> it looks like it's yeah, about, it's about, it's about five, five millimeters. millimeters. Four it's mi I mean, it's probably closer to five, five millimeters. millimeters. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. Um, so, yeah, so, Jeff... I'm, I'm just spitballing you. Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Because, we, I mean, you know, throw a couple squirrels in the mix and we're all set. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you later. Okay. Uh, but uh, so, so Jeff, absolutely, very, very short <clears throat> transmit uh, range here. However, um, there's no reason we couldn't take the output of that transmitter. It's such low power that we couldn't amplify that mm -hmm. with an amplifier of appropriate tuned, uh, tuned frequency range uh, and uh, add a much better antenna to it. So as a source at low power, that's actually really good because if you have something at fairly high power and you amplify high power, you just get more noise. So something at right. low power, which you amplify, less noise, garbage in, garbage out, less garbage in, less garbage out. Yep. So um, absolutely great as a potential source, which we could then use amplified in some other manner. Um, yeah. Have you been able to use this in a, in a pen test yet? For this particular, the FL2K stuff in a pen test, no. Uh, we have on one occasion so far uh, been able to use Vapor Trail in a pen test, um, mm -hmm. and, and mostly largely as a as a demo. As a, you know, they weren't really concerned about that type of stuff because it was wasn't something that was in in their their risk uh, matrix. Uh, but we were mm -hmm. able to demonstrate it. And so that, that was a test you got domain admin in the first like seventeen yeah. minutes, yeah, and then you're like. like yeah, what else can I we can do? show you this vapor trail thing. <laughs> like that'd be pretty cool, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. It is not in your risk matrix the equivalent <laughs> of these are not the droids you're looking for. No, no, no. Just because okay. it's not in your risk matrix doesn't mean you're not looking for them, or doesn't. It's like for that's like saying uh, you know if we have to go to the NSA level skill to get domain admin, right. But like you know. Anybody off the street can just roll in with, you know, the thing. And, right. You know, you can just hit it with, like, you know, a browser and, you know, admin, admin, and we have control, mm -hmm. then it's, you know, they're not trying to protect against NSA-level skill right. for, for that client. Right. Right. And, so. and arguably now with something like this, it doesn't require NSA-level skill yeah. to, to pull off. And, and that was sort of, sort of yeah. the, the, the so lead on to the next one. Larry, the frequency range in the VGA dongle style uh, FL2K. Yep, FL2K, uh, yep. So... You can transmit cellular signals over that. Like, what's your frequency range? Um, I, I I don't remember off the top of my head, but cellular you're talking uh, 850, 950, 1900, 1800 megahertz. Mm -hmm. um, so the range is fairly wide. The resolution, as it were, the bandwidth that you can do is not terribly great. Mm -hmm. Are um, there any restrictions on doing those types of uh, broadcasts? Legally, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, so absolutely, you can yeah. do you can do them. Is it legal uh, to transmit on licensed frequencies? No. Don't you need the ham radio? Uh, uh, but well, right, so even even, even with a ham yeah. radio license, yeah. I'm yeah. not allowed to transmit a yeah. licensed frequency exactly. for cellular. Yeah. That said, the range for something like this to do testing is so small that it probably won't reach to the edge of the patio, which is, I don't mm -hmm. know, five or six centimeters, right, Jeff? <laughs> <laughs> You know what? So, well, so, so and, 25 and, and, to 30 be, millimeters. And I'm not. Be, and I'm not trying to disparage. But, yeah, no, you know, it's no. It's got such a limited range until you can come up with a way to, to boost the signal. Right. Uh, and, and do it in a, and do it in a in a syrup. What's the word? Surreptitious way. Surreptitious. Uh, Surreptilian. Is that a Star Trek? Surreptilian way. Yeah. Or something? Uh, I, I'm. I'm not terribly concerned. I mean, it's cool. It's cool, but 
you know, yeah. the, the now, practical. Uh, now, I haven't been able to test it well enough to know what the effective distance is. Um, but I, but I want to, you know, when you do, we want that in centimeters. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and and mi- I'll give it to you in millimeters and, and in meter, millimeters and just meters, for good measure and meters. Yes. Yeah, because, you know, we are Americans. Yes. We need it both. Yes. Yeah. So the, the thing that I really want to bring up, Josh brought up a great point that, you know, nation state level of effort um, now to potentially create covert back channels with surreptitious devices that look like a, a VGA dongle that might be plugged into Why do we have to keep saying that word? Because it's difficult for you to say. Um, something that's there, we can now go all secret squirrel and potentially have someone that doesn't have nation state level of yep. of effort. Yep. And when we start talking right. about nation state level of effort, Jeff, and you know transmit distances and so forth, I've been uh, following along with uh, Dragos... Uh, one of the founders of Cansec West, and a lot of his research that he's been publishing. Uh, mm-hmm. And some of the things that he has been finding have been amazing, whether they are unintentional or intentional bugs, a.k.a. transmitters, as components of regular chipsets that are toggling GPIO or something else completely. He's finding devices that are pre-owned from the factory with some sort mm. of data exfiltration over some radio medium Hmm. to the point of dragos how do you keep finding these things is it in everything or are they targeting you and how are you so paranoid to go even look for some of this type of stuff but he's based on the oscilloscope output that i've seen (coughs) he's finding some sort of signals coming from stuff whether it's intentional or unintentional. So someday every building that has that stuff is just going to get hit with a missile. It's going to use the FM well, signal as maybe, a, maybe. And a now, beacon. And, and well, now, is this increasing? <coughs> like the number of systems from, from that what, have these From what in? he's yeah. alluding to, yes. Uh, well, you know, in the early days, uh, you know, the whole reason why NSA built copper clad buildings was because of this thing called Tempest. Yep. Was because early computer monitors, you know, would broadcast... You know, they were what a cathode ray tubes, yep. is that what they were ray, called? Yep. So they were they were basically broadcasting a signal out to the screen that you're looking at, but it would just keep going for, you know, hundreds of yards. And and effectively uh, reflected off of the screen too, because it was all electromagnetic hitting metal and such. So, right. So And you get a you great know, tan. Great tan. Great you tan. do TV get a great tan, tan and uh, uh, it's why I have no hair today. Um <laughs> But uh, you know, <laughs> but I'd be nice curious. Nice I don't know anyway. the answer to this, but you know, I know I know monitors sort of you know, and we have new types of monitors these days, obviously. But uh, you know, the the problem was solved by using different technologies. But it, 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 it while it wouldn't surprise me that it's deliberate, it would also wouldn't surprise me that it's just incidental unintentional because absolutely everybody rushes to market with new technology and ooh, ooh, look at what it does and they right. don't Heck they you. don't take the time to stop and look at all the, the you know the side effects and, and, and no. Heck, unintended and s- sending data over uh an integrated SATA bus on a motherboard uh is toggling a gpio pin to send ones and zeros over a trace on a motherboard which is an antenna there's going to mm. be some rf output and they try it's to so limit hot that when you talk nerdy i know Good thing we're not sharing. Well, I mean, I, I, I had a, you know, we had a problem at, at work in the last couple of weeks where uh, we were trying to decide. I don't know if I, we might have mentioned. I might have mentioned this off the air in the last week or two, but uh, you know, it, it's PCI. I'm back in the PCI game, and and we have a customer that's using a mobile device with a card reader that plugs into the audio jack, and they're and they're doing it in a, in a, a little chassis. And to connect the card reader to the mobile device, they're using, um, I think initially they were using a wire, but now they're, they're, they sort of are plugging it through a little bit of a circuit board that they've customized. But, but the question came up, uh, is, there any, is there any leakage? You know, it, you know, most people are familiar with the square you know, yep. card yeah, reader yeah. that plugs into mm-hmm. mobile devices. And, you know, and it's, so it's a, it's a direct connection. I don't know if that thing bleeds any kind of signal or not but and, and i don't currently have the technology to test it but i'm curious mm-hmm. and, and i'm you know but again you've got proximity issues and there's yep. all sorts of other ramifications yep. so so, uh, so, so know, data all that to say that the bleeding of signals <coughs> doesn't surprise me. 
Right, and, and and that said, you know, based on some of the stuff that Dragos has seen with either the intentional or unintentional transmitters, toggling GPI or some variety, and something like this, uh, Dragos has observed that um, you know several hundred meters worth of distance in some of these, uh, and we've seen real world tests with something like the the Raspberry Pi being able to transmit over uh, many city blocks. So you know, in the you yeah. know when I was a kid on Sunday night, I used to be able to pick up a Chicago AM radio station, and I live in Maryland. Yep, yep. RF you is amazing. RF is amazing. Keep amazing. Going. Uh, right. RF is amazing. Exactly. There's some yeah. kind of physics law about that. Um, yes. Uh, whoops. So uh, uh, so I thought Jeff's use case was the best one that I heard in terms of practical application for this. Mm -hmm. I'd love to see if there are leakages from uh, specifically credit card that would be to me a, a really big high value target that right someone may go through the trouble of trying to set this up and overcome some of the any of the limitations to allow them to pull off the attack i mean if you've seen what some of these uh criminals do to atm machines to put skimmers on there <laughs> like this is just the next yep. iteration of that yeah exactly and uh, you even think about some of the was it the crypto timing based <coughs> attacks where you were able to look at the power consumption of the CPU and the various fluctuations to tell, you know, what numbers were involved in some of the calculations yeah. and like next world type of stuff. Mm -hmm. I yeah, see this kind as of the stuff same I can't thing. comment on. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, and it goes back that far that he can't comment on it. Yep. So it's because he can't remember. <laughs> Let's be honest. <laughs> there was apparently some leakage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> some leakage. Yeah. 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 My friend. It happens yeah. when you get older. It does. Uh, so those gray hairs. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Larry. Thereof. And we'll update the show notes. Uh, Wiki.securityweekly.com. This is episode 570. Yep. Uh, it looks like you had some slides. We'll get them in there. Yep, absolutely. Um, so just to, to finish it off really quick, we, we already sort of talked about it. What does this now start to look like <clears throat> when we have, are starting to find all these devices that have the potential to do transmit? This is a USB 3.0 to VGA connector. There's a talk at DEF CON coming up next week that I really want to see, and it's uh, Mike Osman, and I can't remember the other gentleman, um, that is basi they're basically talking um, about building RF transmitters out of stuff that you've got in your junk drawer. Mm-hmm. Like, there's stuff that you can turn into RF transmitters everywhere, and it's something along the lines of ridiculous RF or something uh, of that like. I can I can get back w when we come back from the break mm. with the name of the talk because it's in my calendar. Where do you yes. see this fitting into the tool sets for, you know, guys who are doing pen testing or red team? or yeah. Where do you see them actually using this approach? Uh, so, you know, typically uh, I'd see something like this. Yeah. Um, in an environment where detection by standard methods is really good, mm -hmm. whether uh, so whether it be Wi-Fi, Ethernet, sure. all yeah. that outbound to the Internet, um, or in an air-gapped network, yep. uh, where yep. they uh, have physical access to at some point, <laughs> where they can then put in another method that can get out for something that they're not detecting. Okay. So that was our thing with Vapor Trail was it, if you want to do data exfil, going outbound through the firewall, Right. Someone can detect that. Uh, you're standing up a wireless access point. Someone can detect that. Using cellular, eh, there are some products out there that will do detection for new cellular devices and new cellular base stations. And it, it, it can be done. It's starting to approach something else. But who's testing to see what data is going out on FM broadcast range in the legal, legal ranges? No one. And that was the point. We want to say, yeah. we can do this stuff with cheap stuff. Yep. We should probably start taking RF into account mm -hmm. in our environment to just figure out what's there and see what changes, at least as a start. So, interesting. Hey, I, I, I was, uh, I'm going back to my concern about talking about Bluetooth and the signal, but I Googled it, and Bluetooth actually broadcasts on 2.45 gigahertz. 2.4 gigahertz, yep. So yep. everything is a signal, everything is a wave. Yes, it is, including Sweet. that lovely light and your TV remote. Yeah, yep. I think with you know Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, you know we've done this for a long time, and it's it's really yeah. cool to see it kind of like trickle out into all kinds of other Stuff. RF communications. Yeah, yep. it's it, it's amazing just what's out there that you have no idea. You just need to be well, able to find it. Wi-Fi started out that same way too. Like right. no one was yeah. monitoring oh, yeah. Wi-Fi. Wi Wi Great, it's out there. How do we? Tell. I don't Take know. it a full circle. Mike Osman, he was well, uh, he actually presented at Shmoocon when I uh, released uh, GIS Kismet. Yeah. Yeah. That was that was yeah. GIS Kismet. We have yeah, to yeah, say it yeah, appropriately. Yeah, GIS right? Kismet. Right. Not Jizz right. Kismet. That's right. That's right. Gif Kismet. 
<laughs> J- Batman mobile. G- Giz Kismet or Jiz Kismet, which is it? Uh, Giz Kismet, right? Yeah. <laughs> we didn't have that conversation on the air about let him, GIF. Let him finish no. his thought. No, no. I, I think I think that really is the thought in that, you know, nation state can certainly do some of this type of stuff. It's now coming into the realm of possibility for a less sophisticated attacker that only has a week of engagement time to do data exfil or CNC over some sort of inexpensive device that they can afford to lose at relatively short distances. Over so some a couple part. of these, a Raspberry Pi, if you can get it into the right location and source, then you can yep. exfil. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Exactly. And our intent with back going back to Vapor Trail, our intent with Vapor Trail, where it was a Pi, uh, it, it was a fully self-contained computer where we could plug that into the network and just listen and do responder. Yep. Yep. Capture hashes, yep. drop those hashes back out over FM and then Use those to connect to the non-two-factored VPN or gain mm-hmm. access to o- OWA or, mm-hmm. or you name it. <coughs> so. All I can say is just remember all these waves that are out there in the air, they bounce into things and they might cause things to vibrate. Just saying. Yes. Absolutely. All right. Mm. So that was that was what I had. No, demo, demo fail. With and that. We'll try again. We will take a short break. Come back with the security news for this week. Stay tuned. Stay tuned.